like and subscribe right now or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. In a world of so-called non-violent beauty, life is pain, whether in a human, monkey, or any other animal. Putting animals on trials of pain, terror, and trauma is abusive, cruel, and inhumane by any means. Let's see how these creatures were spared and rescued from their everlasting misery. Teaching Dolphins to Talk Back in the 1960s, a young researcher named Margaret spent months living alongside a dolphin called Peter as part of a groundbreaking experiment to try to teach the animal to learn how to speak. Hello. The interaction between the two of them was recorded on thousands of reel-to-reel -reel tapes. Clearly, Peter. The story starts with Margaret, after getting hired on her dream job, was chosen to live in a semi-aquatic dolphin house in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Funded by NASA under the supervision of scientists named John Lilly, who wanted to communicate with dolphins by attempting to teach them to speak English via their blowholes. Well, wait until it gets weird. Because it turns out, after painting her mouth to resemble an animal's blowhole, she would speak in single words and make an inflection, something that Peter could efficiently follow. But since Peter was a teenage male, and like most teenage males, he had some intimidating urges. Speaking of which, he started to have feelings for Margaret as he rubs himself on her knees, feet, or hands. Margaret tried to divert Peter's mind by sending him to play with other female dolphins, but ended up giving him hand jobs, as it was getting really tough for the poor erotic guy to focus on his lessons. Well, in an era of free love, was it weird enough? Looks like no, because Margaret, after continuing to do so, she ended up having feelings for Peter too. And what started with 60s idealism ended up into the darkness of decade, when the rumors of dolphins suffering from drug abuse and scandal over the nature of Margaret's relationship with Peter spread all over. The funding was then cut down and Peter, after getting transferred to a smaller tank in Miami, passed away. Five Bears Rescued From Abusive Show from The Great Bear Show, five bears named Andy, Chindy, Barney, Bucky, and Brock were confined to barren cages, forced to perform confusing yet uncomfortable tricks and chained to chairs so that people could take pictures with them, while the owners tuck in some cash in their pockets. The footage shows 19-year-old Sydney pacing in psychological distress, 27-year-old Andy confined to hard concrete floors despite painful arthritis, and four-year-old Barney with an irritated skin condition. You can even see a huge patch at its back showing its skin. Quite scared and disgusted. In another footage, Cindy was spotted crying out during a photo session where Steele just happened to smack her paw and yank the chain around her neck, forcing her to do things she didn't want to do. However, the credit goes to Brittany Pete, a law enforcement officer at PETA, who, after fighting for five years, managed to set the bears free as they arrived at the Keepers of the Wild Sanctuary in Arizona in 2022. Finding it hard to step out of their cages, the bears were petrified because of past trauma. But once they stepped out, a hint of hope busted out in their eyes. There was a swimming pool grass near the dens and shady trees under the napping area. It was a world they had never seen before. A dream come true after losing all the hope. Finally, they were able to dig and swim and play and even hibernate without any fear of being tormented ever again. And now let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by a subscriber. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image you come across, just send it to us. Who knows? We might even feature it in one of our videos. Today's subscriber pick points towards this ingenious, brave, and intelligent baby monkey named Ham, short for Hollow Man Arrow Medical. But I am quoting so many adjectives for a monkey, let's find out. The first ever chimpanzee to have stepped into space after being caught and brought to a facility in Florida called the Miami Rare Bird Farm. 
and then sent to Hollow Man Air Force Base in Almagordo to be trained for space flight as part of Project Mercury. However, on January 31st, 1961, this courageous three and a half year old space monkey was sent to space after receiving 18 months of training while being strapped into a constrained called couch. Here, Ham was selected as the chimpanzee whose life would be risked to test the safety of space flight on the eight body. Ham's flight lasted for around 16 minutes, where he had traveled at a speed of approximately 5,800 miles per hour to a height of 157 miles above the Earth. And after performing well in his taste, Ham splashed down into the water and was miraculously found alive. But when the poor monkey was released from the couch, he happened to have an enormous grin, which apparently was interpreted as a happy smile by many people. <laughs> Luckily, after being spared decades of biomedical research, Ham was transferred to the National Zoo and then to the North Carolina Zoo, where he passed away on January 18, 1983, at the estimated age of 26. Eight and the child experiment. What do you think? Could a chimp grow up to behave like a human? Or a human kid could grow up to behave like chimps? Always fascinated by the same thought, a psychologist, Winthrop Niles Kellogg, along with his wife, decided to raise their newborn baby son, Donald, along with a new home arrival, a baby chimpanzee named Gaia. The experiment took place on June 26, 1931, when the couple, after deciding to bring an infant animal into civilization, started to raise them together, which continued for the next nine months, 12 hours a day and seven days a week, with Kellogg and his wife conducting several tests on Donald and Gaia all together. Raising both the babies in exactly the same way, while conducting exhausting experiments such as blood pressure, memory, body size, scribbling, reflexes, depth perception, and the list goes on. For a while, Gaia actually excelled at all of these tests compared to Donald. She would walk upright, use a fork, and had a human-like facial expression, except for talking like humans. Because, for a fact, the psychological and brain development of the species simply didn't allow the chimp to talk or communicate like humans. Eventually, leading to a fall in Gaia's training and nurturing. After all, genetically, she was a chimpanzee. However, on the contrary, when Donald was noticed becoming more like a chimp than Gaia was becoming human, Luella Kellogg decided to put an end to the experiment. The two of them would wrestle in a way that looked more like a chimp play than how babies would interact. And not just that, Donald crawled like Gaia, began grunting and barking like Gaia when he wanted food. Also, besides Gaia teaching Donald how to spy on people beneath doors, it was getting out of control where Mrs. and Dr. Kellogg feared that Gaia getting stronger might harm her human brother too. Hence, they pulled the plug, taking Gaia away, where she was caged to be the subject of another experiment and passed away due to pneumonia months later. And as for Donald, he reached adulthood, became a doctor, and took his own life at the age of 42. Dog Rescued from Cruel Research Meet Teddy, one of the Beagle's dog breeds who, unfortunately, after being born at Marshall Bioresources, a sprawling dog breeding facility had a single purpose. As unlike other dogs, Teddy was never supposed to have a family or to chase balls in the grass. He wasn't even meant to get all the amazing treats for being a good boy, but to be rather sold at a laboratory where he would be utilized in a painful experiment followed by agonizing demise. Because apparently, it turns out that these poor pups were being used by Dow AgroSciences in a year-long fungicide research test commissioned by a pesticide company, where they were introduced to poisonous fumes each day for a year straight emotionally scarred and tormented to the core. Thanks to the Humane Society of the United States who intervened and started an undercover investigation in March 2019, raising a demand to release Teddy and 31 other dogs from Charles River Laboratories. 
campaign continued for quite a time, and after weeks of pressure from the public, the company agreed to release the dogs, and that's when everything changed for Teddy. He went to a brand new life in a loving forever home with his adopters, David and Greta, where he'll never have to worry about cruel treatments, abusive tests, and horrific research ever again while having a second chance at life. See you next time!